All right, good evening everyone. Let's say you want to take a currently existing file used for 3D printing and add your own touch to it, maybe um, custom features and whatnot. I wanted to show you how to do that quickly, easily, and for free, uh, step by step. I'm gonna go through the whole process, keep it as simple as possible, and try not to go over anyone's head. So um, today, as a good example, I wanted to have a caliber mount near my desk so that I could mount my caliber here uh, within arm's reach uh, and have its own place. So uh, that being said, I found this one on thingiverse.com, which is a free CAD warehouse for 3D print files, um, which are commonly STL files. But as you can see, it mounts with double-sided tape, our command strips. I wanted it to mount with screws. Um, and I actually designed this earlier today because my mic wasn't working, so I'm gonna remake it for this video. Um, so. As you can see here, I designed it to have two screw holes. That is my account here. And if you want any of the files I'm working on in this video or um, just want to download that file, you can do so at this link, which I'll hopefully remember to attach to the YouTube video. Um, we're gonna do this uh, together with Fusion 360. Uh, Fusion 360 down here is a CAD um, software that is free for individuals. It's great, especially if you're into 3D printing it really does everything. I actually uh, prefer it a lot over SolidWorks for a lot of stuff, especially, uh, uh, it's crazy because SolidWorks is so expensive, but Fusion is just so intuitive. Like, it just is so much easier to get going. And so, uh, before we start, it's gonna be quick, I promise, uh, but quick note, I thought it was a lot, or I thought it was really cool that some people had watched this video back here that I had posted. I actually store a lot of videos on YouTube for clients, but they're private, um, just to introduce some of the things. And when I got the alert that there was activity on my account, I got worried, but I found out that I had left one video uh, on public where people could find it, I guess. And that's cool, because apparently some people subscribed and I got a comment, so I really like that. Of course, uh, glad to see it was helpful. And I'll maybe release some of my other videos that aren't um, under non-disclosures, of course, and whatnot. So, and shout out to uh, D. Lan Robinson for the compliment. That's great. So let's jump in step by step. I'm going to shrink this down and see what we can do. So you've made it to Thingiverse. You found the file that you like. Click download all files. Once this timer runs down, it will then download. Okay. So you'll see it here in the compressed folder. We need it to be outside of the compressed folder. So I'm going to click that. That's the easiest way to show you how to do this. Uh, go up to files, click that, and then drag and drop the file that you want into desktop. Uh, you can see here, since I did this earlier, the file already exists on my desktop, so I'm just going to not uh, attach another one. Now we'll go into Fusion, so we'll open up Fusion, and this is the, um, the file I did earlier today, but we're going to make a brand new one. Uh, that's just proof of concept there. So you can click new design with the plus icon up here or you can go to file new design. Once you have your new design open, click control S or save um, and name it whatever you want. So I'm going to call this caliper holder version 2 remake and you'll then see it rename itself here and start to um, establish over here. Okay, now we have a file and we're ready to bring in the uh, file we just downloaded off the line. So click upload over here. If you don't see upload, like maybe it looks like this, click the data panel icon, find upload, click upload, and then select files. So um, we're back at desktop and you can see there's the file that we downloaded just a second ago and we dragged and dropped it into desktop so we're going to click open and then you would click upload here you can see the files ready to be uploaded but again since I've already done this it's in fusion already so I'm just gonna click cancel but you would click upload jumping back into fusion you would then see an uploading icon. It would tell you about estimated time, etc. But uh, this is what it'll look like afterwards. You'll have a pink file over here. 
our pink model, um, and with that file's name. Uh, pink indicates a surface model, such as a STL, or if you're working on SketchUp, etc. A lot of those come in as surface models. Um, we're ready to import this into our existing design, but let's go ahead and go here on the name, right click, and click do not capture design history. We're going to do that while we're working with the STL file, but we'll turn it back on in a minute. So click do not capture design history, continue. We're going to then click the um, file over here that we just uploaded to Fusion and drag it into the workspace. So once it appears, you'll also see that you have your first component here. Just click OK. And then we'll close the data panel to just clean up the screen here. So we now have a component. And let's convert it into an editable model. You can edit a mesh model, but it's kind of um, complicated. And a lot of people get frustrated with it. Uh, editing it as a mesh, so I'm going to show you how to edit as a more traditional um, CAD model. So uh, we're going to go up to, we're in the solids tab, we're going to go to model, or modify, sorry, <laughs> and then click, um, or go down to mesh, and then mesh to B rep. So then we'll click the mesh body. You could do it as a body. Uh, convert it into a body, but I'm going to convert it into a component since there's only one thing. Uh, and then I'm going to click OK. Now you can see I've created a new component here. I'm going to go ahead and delete the STL component since I don't need it any longer. And I'll click, click, and rename it um, main body or whatever you want to rename it. Or you don't even have to rename it. So now before we start capturing our design history, turn that back on. Let's go ahead and do the last thing we need to do, uh, which is to clean up this uh, face here. You could edit it again like this if you have enough experience, but it's good practice to simplify this. So in the Surface tab, click that. We'll modify, and then Merge. And then you'll be able to click two faces. You could do select chain. I actually don't like doing that because I do some complex files that crash sometimes. So if that's clicked, um, I suggest most people just unclick that and do it manually like this because it's less likely to fail. Um, and for this video, I'll do two faces at a time. You can do more than that. But again, sometimes there's a system error. So I'm going to click OK. And as you can see, I just greatly cleaned up the model here. Let's see if I can go back and show you that again. Okay, you can see uh, there's a lot of faces, but what I did was I did modify, merge, click two of them, not select chain, and then okay. Greatly simplified. Now let's make it one, so we can do that again. I right clicked here, repeat merge, or you can go up and find merge. Um, click two faces, okay. It simplifies again. And here's where people get frustrated sometimes with Fusion. Um, again, it's great software, I'm not dissing at all. But I've just noticed if you click the largest face for some reason and a smaller face and try to merge them before getting the smaller faces, sometimes it'll crash. And I'll show you that now. It'll probably do it. I'm going to click OK. And you'll see it probably fail. Turn black over here on the screen. And then you'll see the edit fail. So there you go. It's having a lot of trouble. And then it failed to stitch. So uh, no problem at all. Don't let that stress you out. Just grab. The smaller faces, click enter and repeat that. I'm going to right click this time and enter. And now you can see we've gotten through to making this a nice editable model. And I'm not worried about all these faces here since I'm not editing those features. We're going to go back to the solids tab. And now that we have a nice 3D model, we're going to right click here on the name and then go to capture design history because we want to start treating it like a CAD model, so not a surface model. And now you'll have a design tree down here, or sorry, I'm thinking SolidWorks. Uh, now you'll have a um, timeline down here, which will be super useful in the future. Um, so now we're kind of done. If you wanted to just simply do feature changes, like extrude, you could click uh, face, you know, add some thickness maybe. Um, 
or you could just drag and drop the whole feature, or sorry, not drag and drop, I don't say that, let's go back. Let's see, create, ah, uh, to hold out of my thing. Okay, sorry. You click hole, add a hole, um, if you wanted, that's a simple way of doing it. Um, if you don't really care, like it didn't matter, like this one really doesn't matter, I could just leave it wherever I want and uh, just add holes. But uh, I want to show you a better way to do that, which is to use the sketch feature to define exactly where those holes go. So for this one, I'm going to click this face, click create sketch here. Oop. That is the proper way to do that, but let me first show you a problem that you run into a lot. So if I click these two faces, um, sorry, inspect, click one face, click another face, it'll give you a measurement. This is 14.96 inches, which is wrong. A lot of times this happens, you could go in and correct it and set it up for the units to match when you uh, import it, but here's the easier way. So 14.96 inches uh, is wrong, but if we go on to the um, pictures on Thingiverse, we can see the sizing uh, of the caliber, and we can, if you look at the picture, you can see the two faces and about where they line up on the caliber, and you can just grab a ruler, if you look back at the camera where I am, uh, and just hold it, and then you can see one face is here, one face is about there, and if you look on the ruler, it's about 1.5 inches. So, we know from here to here to need to be about 1.5 inches. So, and again, there are better ways to do that, but I uh, want to make this simple. So, looking at that, 15 inches, uh, pretty much, we know it's 10 times bigger than it needs to be. So, let's just go to modify, scale, scale this of the body, click the body, so it's selected there. The point doesn't really matter because we're doing a uniform scale. And then tell Fusion, we want this to be one tenth the size it is now. Okay. And then go down our click inspect again and then verify that. Now we're at 1.5 inches. 1.496 is essentially 1.5. Um, so now it's properly sized. Let's go ahead and do the sketch that way we were looking at it earlier. I'm going to go and do the line tool, and if you see as I, uh, it automatically snaps to this edge here, I'm going to look for that midpoint icon, the triangle that just appeared here, click that, and I'm doing this to find the center of the part, because I want two symmetrical holes. Um, I'm not going to go too far into detail on this, but I'm adding a midpoint line, and then another line to reference. So go to create point and find the midpoint of that smaller line I just made and now we have a point um, to mirror here click mirror click the point as the object you want to mirror click the mirror line as the reference for center oops I clicked them both as the objects okay so object is the point the mirror line is this line here and now we have a mirrored point over there so they're symmetrical and they reference each other um, again, you don't have to do it this way. We're going to finish sketch. And now I'm going to go to the hole tool here. And I'm going to click these two points. And if it didn't let you click, go ahead and from sketch, click that option. Not this one. You click from sketch. And then click your two points. Okay. As you can see, I've already set the sizing for my hole. I selected a counterbore because I want it to be below the surface. I want the hole type to be simple and a flat cut because it doesn't matter. I want it to go all the way through. Um, if this confuses anybody on these next steps, sorry, but it's actually pretty simple. So as you can see, it is going to go all the way through on the settings I wanted here. like. Um, there's not enough uh, body to cut a hole like that, of that shape, which I've defined here in these settings. So I'm going to need a thicker. So I'm just going to cancel, go to extrude. I'm going to 
I've accidentally clicked that, so I'm just going to click X on that face, and then I'm going to click the bottom face, add thickness, and 0.15 inches is enough. Go back to the hole command, and don't worry, it wasn't for not, they uh, will save your last thing. So go to multiple, click the two points, and as you can see now, there's more than enough body here to cut the size and shape of the hole I want cut. And if you have multiple bodies, you can select or deselect the bodies that are affected by this feature. I'm going to click OK. Now you can see that is what I intended for the design. And now we have created a successful CAD file that is editable. And all we got to do is print it now. So let's convert it to a file that printers can use. So I'm going to click main body, right click, go to save as STL. Um, if you wanted to save simply as an STL file, you would not click send to print utility and just click OK, which would let you save this wherever you want as an STL file, as you can see here. Um, however, if you take the time, it'll save you a lot of energy in the future. Go to Save as STL, click Send a Print Utility, and set up your printer um, settings, and then click OK. And as you'll see, it'll send it directly to whatever I'm using. So Fusion or uh, Flash Print is what I'm using for my 3D printer. And then I can immediately go in and add the supports and print the file. But since this video is on how to edit the files um, and add your own features, same. Um, you can uh, request and I'll make videos on how to print and my suggested printers, etc. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Hope someone found this useful in the future. Um, I'll probably remake this video because I know the audio is going to turn out terrible using this really old mic that I had to resort to today, but I thought it was cool. Other people were finding my videos and wanted to make another one. So, okay. Thanks, guys. Bye.